Hello and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to be looking at some further modifications to the suspension system on an MGB, namely fitting these, uh, these new dampers from AJ Barnard Engineering. So if we take a look at the damper we'll be able to see that the, uh, the arm here has been modified slightly and that's, that's been modified to accept an eccentric bolt that drops in there, a bit like the, like the suspension on sort of more modern vehicles and this then allows the, uh, the top bolt here to be, to be rotated and adjust the camber on the car. One of those things uh, MGB doesn't have is any camber adjustment at all. You can, you can fit negative camber wishbone armors to a car, but I really like this method of, of having an adjustable camber so we can set it up for each track individually. You can actually see the, the original set of dampers there. It just has a normal sort of a, I just hold it up so it has a normal round hole. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. And then these dampers have been specially modified and they have and they have the oblong hole there. Another item from AJ Barnard's that I'll be fitting is this very neat, it's an adjustable damper valve for the uh, for the lever arm dampers. They do a set for both the front and the rear, and it's got a little a little sort of eight mil socket eight mil bolt on the end here, and we turn that to adjust adjust the sort of the, 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 the stiffness of the dampers. If we turn it clockwise, it makes them stiffer, and if we turn it anti-clockwise, it makes them looser. Very useful on a race car, um, especially in, in sort of wet conditions and that sort of thing where you want to have the car as soft as possible in, in the damp and have it nice and stiff for the drive. Also very useful, I think, if you have a track day car that you drive on the road, you can, you can set this a little bit looser when you're on the road and then go for a stiff setting when you're taking it to the circuit. Fitting the valve is fairly straightforward. What we'll need to do is to remove the old valve fr from the shock absorber here. We're going to give this a good flush out with oil. I won't cover that too much in this video because that's already already covered in my previous suspension video. So I've put a little card just in the corner of the uh, of the video here, so you can see see the full suspension uh, rebuild video. Alongside the special dampers for the front of the car, I've also got these for the rear of the car. Now this is just a wedge that goes onto the rear axle. The idea being we want to tilt tilt the nose of the axle forwards a bit by raising the back a bit. With the cars that we that we race in the UK they all tend to be they tend to be fairly low and so what you're getting is the spring the spring with the axle on top of it is, is, is raising up to make the car lower and that in turn is turning the nose of the axle up a little bit up a little bit too high. So by fitting fitting this plate at the back we, we're lifting the back end of the axle to turn that nose down a little bit so it lines up nicely with the uh, with the prop shaft in front. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be covering this a little bit later on in the video. So here is our damper in, in the vise. I've got these little, hopefully you'll be able to see them, yeah, just at the bottom there. These are, they're a soft, soft set of jaws for the vise. They're really useful for working on the, working on the dampers or, or anything in particular you want, you want to hold in the vise without getting it damaged. So let's start off taking the old the old damper valve out. This should be a three quarter headed headed socket. Let's just see if that wants to come. There we go. That's just cracked off. It's quite a slim, slim fitting on here. So just be very careful you undo it, not to damage it when you when you when you undo it. Now I think this 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 valve in here I don't think has got has got anything on it at all. I think it's just uh, just been popped in there because they because the guys at Barnard knew I was swapping it. So that's that can come away. This is this is the new valve that we'll be fitting, but before we do that, what I'd like to do is just to give this a bit, of, a bit of a rinse through. I knew that was going to happen. Just a bit of a rinse through with some nice clean fluid, and then we'll uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll fill it up again. Okay, so we'll start off by getting all all eight of these little screws out of the top. So that's all eight screws out. Now I'm just going to see if we can carefully lift up lift up this back cover we're reusing this cork gasket so I'd like to try and get that all all off safely if we can I've just got a little razor blade I'm just making sure there we go that's popped off trying to get it all to come off nicely to get that it's just a little bit stuck down there there we go so that's the uh, that's the back off it's a fairly it's sort of still fairly fresh oil this in this damper, but I'm gonna tip it out and we're gonna change it anyway. So let me just step this up. So now we just pour pour some of that old oil old oil out. And to rinse it out I'm actually just gonna use just gonna use some, some, some more fork oil. I'll just tip some in. You can just use sort of normal car oil if you want. So I've got a 
it's like a, the tail end of a bottle there so I thought I might as well just finish it off and just work that in just a little bit obviously this is again this is covered in my other video a bit more so I'm just going to do this do this fairly quickly for today because the oil that's coming out is uh, it was fairly clean anyway so I can tell from the, from the colour of the oil that came out, so it, it really didn't need, need much cleaning. So I just gave it a quick rinse through. All I've been using is a, is a, is a, is a 20 weight oil. This is a Motel one. Uh, I think AJ Bar I'd recommend using a 15 weight oil in a sort of road car and, 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 a, and a 20 weight oil in, in a race car. Personally, I would never go over 20 weight um, in, in an MGB shop, whether you're using uprated valves or adjustable valves. Um, I think going up to 40 weight, I know it stiffens the shock up, but it can, uh, I think it puts a little bit too much strain on the on the arms. So here's our here's our shock, just, just, as I said, just, just rinsed out. The valve is still out at the bottom, and now we're gonna start, we're gonna start the refilling process. So bottom valve is out. Um, the, there's, a, there's a drain uh, drain plug on here which we didn't remove anyway. So we should be able to just pour this back in, and it won't. The oil won't come out of the uh, of the plug at the of the uh, the valve at the bottom as long as you don't move the arms too much. So I'm just going to pour it in. I have noticed I am going to have to move the arms slightly because I'm not quite I'm not quite level. So I'm just going to pour this in. See if any little air bubbles appearing. So we'll keep, we'll keep pouring. Just give it a few moments to settle. Just fill it right up to the line, or to the top of the, uh, the sort of the top of the casting. There we are. So I'll just give that a few moments. I'm just, just going to level that up a tiny bit. Be careful not to lose too much. And then, well, I know that's. Full, full all the way to the top. That is the, that is the correct level because obviously on the back back plate here you have a little bit of an opening. So I think once you've turned this back over the right way, it sits at the right level inside when it's all the way up to the to the top of the of the, of the casting there. So let me pop this uh, this back on again. We're just using the the original screws. They've got some shape proof uh, shape proof washers on them as well. So I'll go and get all all of these and I'm not going to tighten any up until I've got all eight all eight back in and started Okay, so that's all, all eight of those. And now I can turn it, turn this over, and we can start having a look at the valve. So I'm just going to pop it back in the vise again, again with these, with these nice soft jaws. Now this is the part that can take a bit of time. We need to pour, pour oil into this chamber here. And what I would, I'm just going to adjust this very slightly on the uh, on the vise so that we are try and get that so the chamber part is sort of it's, well the top is horizontal. There we go. So let me just tighten that up. And then this this sort of procedure can take a little bit of time because what we're going to do now is work these arms until we get all of the air out of the uh, out of this chamber. So I'll keep topping this up with the fork oil as we uh, as we go through. And what I like to try and do is every time sort of the uh, the level drops, is fill it up before moving the arms again, and then hopefully you don't draw you don't draw too much air in when you're when you're pulling it through its through its motion. Just gonna just gonna keep topping this up for now until we've uh, until we've got a nice full chamber and no air bubbles coming as I as I move the arms. Okay, so now our our chamber is full, and as I go through go through the movement, we're not getting we're not getting any more air bubbles coming. There's a few little small ones, little micro ones in there. I'm not too worried about those. I think generally the air has been uh, has been purged from the. Uh, the sort of the chamber so what I'm going to do now is put is to fit the uh, fit the new 
There's a new adjustable valve. Just gonna get a bit of tissue to go under there though. And what will happen once we put this, once this valve goes in, it will spill spill the oil out. So let's just pull, push that in carefully. I'm going to avoid moving the arms at the moment until we are it's all, all done up tight. So let's just get that to, get that going down. And then, same as the last one, it should be a 7 16th uh, socket to speed that up. Just give that a nice. I think a careful pinch rather than sort of going too uh, too much with it. You have got an O-ring in there too that should help with the uh, with the sealing up. So let's just give that a careful, not too much of a pull. I think around there should should do that, and then we can just wipe wipe this down. Now I think. We'll have a little look and see where this uh, see where the valve is set to. So, so it's this eight mil, so eight mil uh, sort of fixing on top, and so anti-clockwise means it's as loose as it can go. So let's just give this give this a little bit of a feel. So that's tighten up just a bit more. So that even, even sort of fully out, that does that's got a bit of stiffness to it, and then let's try. Make sure that's so that is fully out and then fully in. And I'm, I'm, I'm expecting I'm going to find it hard to move when it's all the way in yet. So that is, you know, that really has firmed that up. So, what I think I'm going to do to start off with, still we're sort of back on the car, I just leave this all the way out. Just been, uh, just been very briefly experimenting with how stiff, how stiff the dam damper feels and going through the uh, going through the valve there to make to make some slight adjustments and what I've what I've decided to do is rather than going all the way out I've put it I've put it sort of just three three clicks in on, on the valve under there that to me felt very similar to the to the damper that was on the car originally obviously it's going to be going to be one of those things that's just a case of sort of trying it trying and seeing what works I think it's probably best to start off a little bit softer rather than going too firm straight away so we'll we'll sort of work work our way gradually towards towards the settings we're happy with now someone did ask me in the previous uh, previous suspension video that uh, how did I know that the oil level was correct when I filled it up this way so what I'm going to do is just take off the uh, take off the, the sort of the, the, the filler just carefully remove it and if I've done this right there shouldn't be any oil spilling out of here at all or if there is it's just a, just a tiny little bit so let me just loosen that off just take the little plug out so a tiny yes you see a tiny drop of oil has fallen out there I'm just going to give that a second and I think as I said that does look like it's about the well it is it is on the right level there so that's absolutely perfect so we can put this uh, put the filler screw back in now Tighten that up. I'm using a 14 mil spanner on here. I think it's a, uh, a Whitworth fitting. I don't have, I don't have the exact spanner for it, but this one seems seems to be close enough. So there we are. That's back. Up. And a little bit of a little bit of a wipe down, just where a tiny bit of tiny bit of fluid came out. So we got our our new damper ready to fit. So let's take a look at the damper that's going to be coming off the car. I think with an MGB removing these these front wishbone dampers is very well, I wouldn't say very easy, but pretty straightforward at the, at the very least. You've got a you've got a bolt at the top here that goes all the way through, the wishbone bolt there that goes all the way through, and then you've got four. I hope oh, the lighting is bad under here, I'm afraid. Let me just see if I can put a. There we go. So you've got those four four nine sixteenths head um, bolts at the back there. They go all the way through the uh, the, the damper and then into the crossbow. So what I'm going to start off by doing is uh, I'm going to get a jack underneath. I'm going to go underneath this lower, the lower spring pan. It's not such a problem in my car because this, um, the spring now actually isn't under tension. It's quite a short, quite a short, um, well, it's, it's quite a short spring is, is what that is. And so um, let me just, I'm just going to put a little bit of, just just rest the jack there. So it's just touching that, that, um, that lower wishbone just to make sure there's absolutely no tension. Well, make, make sure this isn't all gonna, gonna fall out when, they, when I do this top bolt. So there we go, let's, let's have a look at this, uh, this top bolt now. Uh, so I've got a 5.8 socket just to, uh, just to go on to here. Now this can be a, 
obviously depending how 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 often or, or how good your maintenance on the suspension is this can be a pain to get out of this bolt i would recommend you know if you you know if you do feel inclined every few years it's well worth just loosening it off and uh, just tap yeah just tap it out put a little bit of the anti-seize paste on it and then it ensures that it'll, it'll it'll never get stuck in so the top of the uh the top of the kingpin here it doesn't get quite so much grease as the uh, as the lower ones do so let's just tap that out there we go there we've got there we've got our shock absorber pinch bolt that's the next one here so let's do that again that's a 9 16 head on this so just loosen that off Hopefully I'm not, oh, probably, I am, probably am right in the way of the camera, am I? Um, let's see if I can do it around there, possibly. So loosen that off. I'll be, I'll be re reusing this pinch bolt on the new, on the new dump, because that's actually a titanium bolt that I've, been, uh, that I've been using there. And then that should be enough just to, hopefully just raise, yeah, that has just lifted up, so there we go, let's pop that up a little bit and then what I can do now I can get onto these uh, I get onto these bolts at the back they're a 9 16 head they aren't the easiest to access I've got a I've got an ex a sort of a deep socket here and that tends to be about the easiest way to get onto them just to get those uh, I'll get all four of these loosened up what I will do is I'll get the uh, I'll get the back ones out first because the fronts are a bit easier to see so let me work on Work on all four of these and get them free. So I'm on the, uh, on the fourth and final bolt now. I did the, uh, I did the rear two first and finished up with the final ones purely because they're just, they're just a bit easier to see. So what I will do, well, just while I've got a bit of access here, I'll just give this whole area a bit of a clean down. So I've given the area just a, just a very quick wipe down, and we've got our replacement damper ready to go back in. So I'm just going to, what I like to do is just get all four, all four of these little bolts located. I'll just, just put a smear of the uh, of the aluminium anti anti seize on them as well. So that's, I think that feels, yeah, that feels like it's gone in. So just the same as removal, the uh, the front two are fairly easy to find. It's the rear ones that, that are that bit a bit harder. So let me just see if we can get I've not managed to find that hole just yet, so we'll keep there it is I think. front two just located so let me just try and see if I can get the rear two and I don't think you I don't think the visibility is going to be particularly great from the camera it's sort of even for me here I can't I can't see all that well either it's just I've just got to sort of feel feel that rear one I think that's just got it started I mean what you could do is when you take the old damper off if the threads were stiff getting off is a great opportunity just to re-tap Retap those threads to make sure they're uh, they're nice and clear. But I think it feels like that one started, so we haven't done too badly. And then we've got our final bolt here. Okay, just that little bit of little bit of the anti seize on, and I'm probably going to be right in the way for the camera. So apologies for that. I'll just see if I can get that just to start. So it's important not to start tightening these up until you've got until you're def definitely certain you've got all four all four in and all four started that feels like I have so I'm gonna just like as I did with the uh, front I'll, I'll get the rears get the rears done up first of all no I can still dig these up by hand just for a bit more they're not quite stiff enough for the ratchet yet so let's pull those all up just by 
fingers. So I've just got just got all four pinched up loosely with the uh, with the rats now. Now the tightening torque on these is uh, it's 45 foot pounds or 56 newton meters, and I think I think I can just get a torque wrench on these on these front ones, but I'm just not sure I'm going to be able to on the back. So I might just have to sort of do them as I see fit. So let's see. Yeah, sorry about this, I'm just not sure what you'll be able to see and what you won't because I thought you're working here, I just don't have a great deal of space. Let's just try and pull, pull these two up and I'll just, I think the backs I'm just going to have to do, just going to have to do by hand to what I think is right. There we go, I'll just see if it will go in. I think, I think the last time I did this I'm just not sure I could get, oh no we're lucky I think. Yeah, we've actually got that on there, so I'll do, we'll do what these are. There we go, and uh, this is going to be the one way I might have to move the camera again, but let's see. Oh, we've got on it, so there we go. There we go, so there. Four pinched up, uh, pinched up properly now. Now with that, uh, with that damper in place, we can look at uh, we can look at fitting the rest of the uh, the rest of the shock absorber to the um, to the kingpin now. So I'm just going to put this. Uh, this is the, the wishbone cross bolt. I'm just going to put that back in. I'm not going to do it up at the moment. I just want to put it there so that when I move these move these arms, they they stay together. So hopefully this should all just just sort of slide. Yes, it has just slid slid back over there quite nicely um, so let's look at putting putting these eccentric bolts in next I will just show you quickly the, the bush I'm using in there is the polyurethane one let me just see it's the polyurethane one and it has a metal has a metal collar in there already so these are really nice quality bushes they're the super pro ones I'll put a link in the description to all the parts and all the details from um, from AJ Barnard Engineering as well so that's there let's get We've got our eccentric, our eccentric bolt here, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some grease just along along this whole shaft here, rather than the anti, because I want to be able to turn this turn this whole assembly when I come to set set the uh, set the, the, the camber up. So let me just pop. So I've just got normal grease on this one. I'm, I'm going to go through from the, from the front side first, if I can hopefully locate that it's somewhere around there. There we go, so that's hopefully will go goes all the way through. And then I'm gonna so I've got the nut and the washer for the other side. So again I'm gonna put a bit of grease just on this on this washer face because this whole assembly will need to turn when setting that setting that camber. So that can just drop in there like so. And then for the for the final nut on the end, that I'm just gonna use um just going to use some normal anti seize on that, so that should just pop in. So I think it's a metric, it's a metric um, bolt that Barnard has supplied us with. So let me just, I think it's a 19. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to pinch this up too tight yet, but I'm just going to just give it a little bit of a squeeze, and then you'll be able to see what what happens when you start adjusting adjusting the bolt. So hopefully with a camera, let's move that. Around. There. If you if you look at what the sort of the kingpin does when we when we move this move this, you'll see it brings it brings that whole assembly in, and so that's bringing that's bringing that camber that's making that negative camber on the front there. And you can keep turning, and so it'll come all the way in, and then start pushing. It will start pushing back out again as well, and then so that's that's it back out. So what I'm going to do, I'm just I'm just going to set this sort of in the middle, so about. 
I think it's about there. So the sort of the bolt would essentially be in, in the middle of where the hole was. And then we'll have to set this up once uh, once we sort of finished finished it off, so uh, let's uh, let's give that a bit of a pinch for now. I think what I'm going to do with this is give it the same the same tightening torque as the uh, as what the, the, the top bolt would usually be. So let me just double check that. That's 56 newton meters on there, exactly the same as those uh, as the bolts for the uh, for the dampers as well. So let me just see if we can. There we go, so that's just pinched. The wash up the um the wishbone box, I think that's 20, 20 foot pounds, so let me just do that one as well. So again, I imagine my hands are going to be all over the front of this, uh, of what you can see. Okay, so hopefully that'll go on. Okay, this is just 27, 27 newton meters. There we go. And with that, with that done up, that is all of this, uh, all of that damper now installed. So. Do. Well, I think we're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave the uh, the front part of the suspension now. So we're gonna have to come back and look at this once uh, once the wheels are on the ground and we can start having a start having a, a, a sort of a, a bit of a play with the settings on here to see what it, see what it can do. Hopefully, you'll just be able to see the uh, the um, the little. Let me just move the camera. Hopefully, you'll just be able to see on the bottom the bottom of the wishbone, the uh, bottom of the damper there is where the adjuster for the valve is. So you may be wondering what the advantages of having having adjustable camber are. Um, I would say it's probably one of those things that you only really need to bother with on, on a race car or, or a track day car. I think for road use, I don't think you'd, you're not really going to get the benefit from it because obviously the downside to, to adding camber is you, you, you do end up with uneven tyre wear. So I possibly wouldn't go down this uh, down this adjustable camber route unless you were sort of track day in the car or doing, doing sort of competition with it. And personally, I've always liked the idea of being able to sort of have adjustable camber on an MGB on the car I'm racing. I started off with a sort of adjustable trunnions that they were, they sort of, they sat in the, in the top here. They were like a little piece of plastic, it's similar to this. But the, the problem with them was that as the suspension moved through its travel, the trunnion itself turned as well. So you could never actually set them up correctly. I'm really hoping with this, uh, with the system here from AJ Barnard, that having this sort of much more modern style of eccentric bolt arrangement means that you can sort of you can clamp this up and it shouldn't move at all once the uh, it, when it, when it when the suspension moves through its cycle um, what I'll probably start off by doing is sort of run these sort of fairly neutral to begin with so it tends to be most circuits in the UK we run clockwise so that means we end up with more with more right hand turns and left hand turns so what I'm going to try is a little bit more negative camber on the left hand side of the car because when you're going around a corner that goes around goes around to the right it's actually the left hand side of the car that's that's loaded up and so a little bit of negative camber on this side should be should be beneficial. Uh, the right hand side I'll, I'll probably just leave in, in a fairly neutral position for now. So around to the back of the car now we're going to have a look at our, our very special shim we got from AJ Barnard here. That's uh, this is used to, uh, to to sort of tilt the, the the nose of the axle forward. So if I show you underneath the car there, you can see in the middle of the in the middle of the diff that's the. Uh, that's the part we're trying we're trying to tilt forwards and so what we're doing is if I just uh, let's get ourselves in position here we'll be taking taking these four these four bolts off lifting the spring shackles out and then the the wedge part goes in goes in underneath underneath the axle just there so what we'll start off by doing let's uh, let's get these uh, let's get these four these four bolts off first of all then we can lift we can lift this. Uh, we, we can lift the the, the, the link part out. Uh, the car's on on four axle stands. Uh, I've got the whole lot up at the moment, and we've got it. We've got a jack just in the middle. What I might need to do is just just to help with the weight of the axle a bit when I lift when I try and get the uh, when I try and put the the, the, the sort of the, the, the wedge part in there. The, the jack can be used just to lift lift the axle up a bit. 
one thing we need to check before before putting up, putting away Jean is how much is how much thread we've got on, got on the screws here. As you can see, there's not not a lot of thread showing on the on these shackle bolts. But luckily with these with these parabolic spins, I've got some spacers just in there that are that they're underneath the uh, the spring at the moment. So they're not actually doing anything in terms of adjusting the ride height. So what I can do is I can take I can take one of those spacers out when I put when I put the uh, the, the little wedge in. So to begin with, let's. So to begin with, let's get these uh, let's get these bolts uh, loosened off. So on this car, I can just loosen off and the damper as loose as I can, and then that should allow me just to pull that whole that whole part down there. Excellent. And then this should all slide off with any luck. Okay. And then we've got our little rubber cap, um, that little rubber pad there. And hopefully this whole that all lifts away. And that should be free. There we go. And what I will do, I'm just gonna I've got a jack in the middle of the in the middle of the axle. And what I'm gonna do if I just put that down a little bit, I'll just be able to raise uh, raise this side up slightly. So if you'll be able to see I've just managed to raise up the axle a bit. That's just giving me the access to take these last parts off. And then with these power bolts, we're not gonna take one of these spaces out. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna undo this uh, this nut and bolt there and drop. Drop one of those. Uh, drop one of those spaces off. So now I'm just gonna just gonna loosen this this bolt that runs through the entire sort of spring assembly. I'm hoping to sort of leave most of this intact and just just sort of pop pop that off and then put this put this just back on again loosely for now. And just to show you very briefly, there is an orientation for the uh, for the shim. You'll notice it has a has a right angle edge there, and then the the, the, the top part there is the uh, is the angled bit. And we all want to make sure that the sort of the, the right angle piece is is on the bottom. It sits. Hopefully, you'll be able to see. It's very tight under here. It just sits on top. It'll just locate itself on the bolt that runs runs through the spring there. And then I'm just going to do these do this back up again. So we've got our little, we've got our spacer in place now. So then we can put our, put the rubber spring pad back on, the rubber pad, and then we've got, we've got the metal, the metal plate that goes on top of that, and then underneath, again we've got our, we've got our rubber pad. And then, and then that metal plate. That, that's, that's going to sit. Well, oh, metal plate can get back on in a moment. Let me drop. Let me drop. So there we've got our rubber plate on and our metal, and that's going to have to sit back on in a moment. Let me just see what we can do here. Now that's going to. That's just going to let stay there. I'm just going to drop the drop the jack down there so that the axle will locate again on this on this top pad. So hopefully. You Again, it's hard to see, but the, the axle has, has dropped back in now, so we can start putting the U shackle back over the top. So that's the, the top part of the shackling. We've now got our, our spring pad, our lower spring pad underneath. It can be a pain just to get these uh, get these in. Okay. As you can see, I sort of get you get one in, and then sometimes what I might just do, just very quickly, is just put a 
just put a nut just on these just to hold in in place so it doesn't come out of its own accord so let me just do that that's all all four in so let me get that pushed up and then we can have these off again and what I will just do before we before we put this all back together just gonna put a bit of anti-seize just around this uh, around those threads there and the lower the sort of the big lower plate can now go on now I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a, a, a nut and a washer on these. Sometimes you sort of have to pull them, pull them through a bit first, and then. Oh, that one looks like I might do on the rear one. So let me just see. Let me just see what I can do on the inside one. So that. Oh yeah, that's just that's just started. And I'll try and do. I'll try and do the one opposite. And I'll just see whether I'll get one of these started or not. Because sometimes as long as you can get as long as you can get one in, when you start pulling it up on the ratchet it will it will bring the other side in as well, but let me that's that's okay and then, then our final one here. And then what I'm going to do, I'll get the, uh, I'll get the ratchet. Now I, I would say with these, it's important not to do, not to do them up too tight. If you do sort of wind these up too much, what I find can happen is you can bend, bend this sort of lower plate, and then these, these other plates start to distort as well. So I think what I'll do, I'll just get them. I want to get all, all sort of four, all sort of four lined up and, and, and started just gently and then I think what I what I tend to do is around sort of 20 Newton meters sort of 15 to 20 foot pounds just to see how that feels on the on the torque wrench and maybe add a bit more if required so let me just let me just get all of these uh, all four started I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep pulling them down until I can actually see the see the thread sort of come come through the end of the uh, of the nylock, the nylock nut there. Just a little bit more on that one. There we go. So that's that's all four. I've got the just got a little bit of thread just coming in, coming in and past uh, past the nylock. Maybe just a touch more on that one. Now, in terms of a, of a torque, I've just set the wrench to 20, 20 newton meters. This is not foot pounds, so I'm just going to, I'm going to sort of pull one up and not the other. So I'm just going to go around, go around them all. None of them have, have, have clicked. Let's just click 20 there. After the first session in the car, I'll probably give these another check just to make sure that the, uh, the torque has stayed the same. There we go, that's 20 on there. Yeah, I think that's... It's a fairly light torque, but I think that's, uh, I think that's enough for them, really. Yep, yeah, that should do. So I've been... I've been around now and done both sides. It's probably not going to be immediately obvious, but hopefully that should that should mean that that uh, that, that knows that difference. It does look like it's pointing a little bit lower, but we'll see a bit more once the car's back on the deck. So with both the front and rear suspension modifications done, that does complete our installation work. So we'll have to see how all this works out at the track. We're just coming up to the end of February 2022 at the moment. We're just about to hopefully make a very important subscribers master milestone of 4,000 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed to the channel already, please do so. It would help me enormously and it is completely free. The race season starts properly on the uh, 19th of March and hopefully we'll be at, we'll be at Brands Hatch 
and you'll join me there. Many thanks. Bye.